Well, Energy Media Readers, we're here with Alan Fogwell, the head of uh, Canadian Energy Research Institute, talking about a study around uh, battery storage for uh, power utilities. And, and Alan, we were talking, we've covered a couple of, of topics uh, previously, but now we're going to talk about arbitrage. Now, maybe it might be a good place to start if you could explain what arbitrage is. Well, uh, arbitrage would be when a company, either a broker or a marketer, someone who wants to be involved in the, the trading of electricity, uh, is looking to buy electricity at a certain price and sell it at a higher price. It's the same as you would find in any sort of stock market where, they, where people try to buy stocks at a low price and when they do sell them, try and sell them at a high price. Uh, and in the case of arbitrage for the electricity grid, you have to be able to store that electricity. Um, and what we're finding, and th this is mostly just for Alberta and Ontario uh, for the most part, what we're finding is that the cost differential uh, in terms of the market clearing price between the low part of the day or the low part of the month or the low part of the market per se, and the high part of the market are not sufficient to cover the costs associated with the storage. So it's not a big part of the market. It, it, is, it is potentially uh, a part of the market for those two provinces, but it, from, a, from a cost effectiveness point of view, it's, it's very difficult for the uh, business case to be made that if you uh, buy, buy it and store it and, and, and then resell it, that you're gonna make any money at it. As costs come down for both gener uh, renewables generation and for storage, uh, do you expect that arbitrage will be profitable in the future? Well, it's possible in terms of uh, the, the um, change in the price for renewables, that will start to bring down to a certain extent the, the low time, low price uh, market clearing price. Uh, now, it's not certain that they will have much of an impact in terms of the high price, but definitely in periods of, of surplus, if they have to provide power because they're on a must run sort of situation, they could, as a result, make sure that uh, very low cost uh, generation comes into play. And then in terms of the, the storage, whatever that storage technology is, if that price comes down, then it, you need a smaller differential in terms of the low, the low market clearing price and the high market clearing price in order to make a profit. And is the Canadian market for this big enough? And the reason I ask is I think we're already at 80% low carbon power generation. And so if we bring on enough, say uh, intermittent renewables, for that, you know, to displace coal for that other 20%. Is there, is there enough room in there for uh, arbitrage traders to potentially make a profit? Well, when you're looking at arbitrage, it has nothing to do with the carbon emissions. It really has everything to do with the, the dynamics of the market itself. Uh, so it only depends on, on what types of technologies you're pulling out in terms of coal versus what types of technology you're putting in, which is wind and solar. And, and right now, actually, coal, new coal would actually be more expensive than wind and solar. So you are bringing in more low cost power, uh, uh, but the question is at the high price or the high demand periods, are you using really expensive uh, power options to provide that power? If you're not, if you've got a lot of hydro, for example, or a lot of low cost natural gas, the difference between those market clearing prices might not be very high. So this is really a separate uh, application aside from what we consider some of the environmental um, uh, objectives that people have for uh, decarbonizing the electricity grid. Uh, last year I sat in on a conference and I'll make this my last question for you. Uh, I, I sat in on a conference where the uh, the uh, power grid regulator, I forget the name of the organization, but from California was giving a presentation on how they're dealing with some of these issues. Uh, they seem to be on the leading edge in, in North America. Are there lessons from California and other jurisdictions that Canada or the pro provinces can apply? 
Oh, absolutely. California has often been a leader over the last 40 years on uh, various electricity system uh, policies. So uh, I would I would always uh, start off by looking at what California's done. And they have a very integrated system and they're a much larger system than any of our uh, provinces and territories, which means they have a greater ability to test new technologies. And, and frankly, it's much better to let someone else test and fail, and then we can, we can figure out what to do in order to avoid some additional costs. And the reason why I say that is because it's not just the fact that we are bringing on new technologies. We have to keep in mind that there's a concern about affordability. People have, are concerned about affordability, not just for their energy costs, but for a lot of their, their regular daily living expenses. And so when we, when we are moving forward with our uh, electricity system, that can affect a lot of people if we make mistakes. So uh, to a certain extent, there is, there is justification to be risk averse and to look and see what other people have done first and then adopt what works and ignore what doesn't. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask one supplemental question now. Okay. I'm I'm often uh, I'm fond of saying when I get into debates with those who want the energy transition to be speeded up, uh, I'm often fond of saying that you can have it as fast as you want, but if you get want it faster, you have to accept a higher cost and higher risk that you're going to break something. Is my little maxim? Does it apply here? Yes, it does. <clears throat> and a great um, example of that is the Ontario Electricity Grid. Uh, there was very strong uh, motivation by the uh, previous government that had been in place for um, uh, a number of years, and they wanted to move forward very quickly with uh, phasing out of coal and bringing on new wind and solar and other technologies to reduce the carbon emissions of that grid. Um, they've achieved that achieved a lot of the objectives. They were able to uh, uh, get off coal in a, uh, an expected time frame, but it did create a lot of additional costs. And the one thing about the, uh, the electricity grids across the country is that they are very complex systems and um, they are very um, uh, expensive systems. And so if you want to uh, move away from some of those elements, there's a cost associated with accelerating the retirement of certain elements, and there's a cost associated with bringing on new. And one of the other things associated with the Ontario market is they were uh, a victim of poor timing in the sense that at the time they were moving forward with a very big push towards wind and solar, the maturity of those technologies weren't really there. We are benefiting from that right now globally, uh, but when the, when the Ontario system was looking to pick those technologies, we were looking at earlier stage, you know, uh, generation one, generation two type technologies, and they came with uh, a much higher costs. Uh, so uh, it, there, is, there is something to be said for taking your time and putting things in place to be able to address that affordability question. Alan, thank you very much for this, and we'll look forward to chatting with you about the third technology that was addressed in your study. Oh, you're welcome.